Hi! Welcome back to Simply Maker Channel. Our channel offers tons of simple ideas to make the things around you work better, and make your life easier. If you like to make things, subscribe now for fresh ideas and inspiring projects. In this video, I'm going to show you a better way to add Bluetooth connectivity to your old speaker, or vintage audio system that uses a DC power source. This upgrade allows you to enjoy wireless music from your old device, and make it more convenient to use. Before we get started, let's take a look at some basic options. The easiest way to do this, is by using an external Bluetooth audio receiver. Most of the external Bluetooth receivers will need an additional power source, mostly from a USB outlet. This means, you need to add an additional USB port near your audio system, just to power the Bluetooth module. There are some models that have an internal battery, like this little one. It can operate without external power, but eventually, it will require recharging, and I don't think it is suitable for a desktop setup like this. In case your audio system operates on DC input, you can simplify the setup by integrating the power source and the external Bluetooth into a single module. This way, you can achieve a neater wiring setup without worrying about finding an additional power source. For this project, I will use my old Tivoli Model 1 tabletop radio. I really love this speaker for its sound quality and elegant design. This speaker can use both AC and DC as the power input, and its auxiliary port is located next to the DC jack. So, I've designed a custom enclosure specifically for it, which can be directly attached to its back without requiring any additional wiring. To make this, I will use this DIY stereo Bluetooth board. It cost around $1 from AliExpress. According to the website, it's Bluetooth version 5, the transmission distance is 15 meters, and the input voltage is 3.7 to 5.5 volts. Another thing I like to mention is, the Bluetooth board we're working with is quite popular. It has many versions and manufacturers producing it. In my case, I purchased two of these boards from the same supplier and the same listing, but at different times. The board on the left, which has the default Bluetooth name of VH314, is the first one I purchased, while the other one is named XFWBT. Upon using these boards, I noticed that the main difference between them was the status interface. The XFWBT board has a sound notification when it's powered on and is ready to connect, and the LED blinks rapidly. It also has a notification sound when a device is successfully connected, and the LED remains on. During music playback, the LED blinks slowly. On the other hand, the VH314 board has no notification sound and the LED always blinks rapidly when powered on. To convert DC 12 volts to DC 5 volts, I will be using a fixed input isolator instead of a buck converter. Initially, I designed the circuit using a mini buck converter, but during testing, I discovered that it produced some ground loop noise. Although this noise is barely noticeable, and can only be heard at maximum volume with no input, it can still be quite annoying. However, this problem does not occur when using a separate power supply. If your system requires a different input voltage, you can use a buck converter to convert from a higher DC voltage to 5 volts. Then connect a 5 volts to 5 volts input isolator between the buck converter and the Bluetooth board input. Other components for this project included a 5.5mm DC socket, a DC jack, a 3-pole 3.5mm audio jack, a small slide switch, and finally an optional 5x5 magnet. You also need some basic electronics tools, like a soldering iron and wire stripper. I already included a list of the components, tools, and links to the 3D print parts in the video description below. The 3D printed enclosure for the Tivoli Model 1 consists of three parts. The first is the connector component, which fits snugly into the back of the speaker case, and houses the DC jack and audio jack. The enclosure itself contains the Bluetooth module, step-down converter, and switch. Finally, a cover that holds the DC input socket. Now, let's make it. Start with preparing the 3D print components. 
First, we are going to use the 5 16 hand tap tool with a 24 fine thread to create threads for the DC jack and 3.5 mm jack. Both have the same diameter and thread. Tap the thread to both holes on the connector part. Next, use a soldering iron to insert M3 heat insert nuts into the 3D printed parts. These nuts will need to be inserted in one spot on the connector part, and three spots on the main part. Apply a thin layer of epoxy glue to the connector part. Then attach the connector part to the main part, making sure they fit together snugly. Clamp the two parts together, using a clamp or tape to hold them in place while the epoxy sets. In the next step, we will insert a magnet into the enclosure's back. The magnet will be attached to a screw on the back of the speaker for extra holding. This is totally optional. Apply epoxy glue to a 5 by 5 magnet. In order to insert the magnet into the enclosure, attach the magnet to a bench vise, and use a large screw nut to support the other side of the enclosure. Align the magnet to the provided hole and press it in. Next, we're going to work with connector parts. Start with DC jack. Separate the DC jack from its shell. Trim off the negative pin connector to shorten it for a bit. Then smooth the cut edge with a metal file. You need two wires for each pin. Twisted two wires together and tin it with some solder. Then connect them to both the positive and negative pins of the DC connector jack. Once all the wires are connected, then cover all the connections with some shrink tubes. Our next step will be working with a 3.5 mm audio jack. Separate the head of the audio jack from the shell. There are three pins on the audio jack output. The tip is for the left channels, the center ring is for the right channel, and the sleeve is for the ground. If you are not sure about the pinout please use a multimeter to double check it. Connect each pin with a different color of wires. Don't forget to make a note of the pin they are connected to. After finish the connections, Cover them with some shrink tubes. Here's what the finished audio jack looks like. To assemble the audio jacks into the enclosure, begins by inserting their connected wires into the top holes on the connector parts. Then carefully screw them into the tapped holes on the case. Repeat the process on another hole with the DC jack. I'd like to mention that I swapped out the DC jack wire with a shielded wire. I hope this will minimize the hum that occurs when there is no connection. However, it didn't help much in this case. The hum is still present, and it appears to be coming from the speaker's auxiliary port. Anyway, the humming sound won't happen if the Bluetooth module is connected and powered on. Now, let's continue with the enclosure. Attach the slide switch to the enclosure with M2.5 screws. The next step is to attach the DC socket to the enclosure cover. Secure it in place using the provided screw nut. 
use a wrench to tighten it up. Now it's time to connect the electronic components to the connectors according to this wiring diagram. You can find a link to the diagram in the video description below. Let's begin by wiring the input. Solder a positive and negative wire from the DC jack to the DC socket. Make sure that the positive wire is connected to the center pin. Next, we will connect the diode to the positive wire from the DC jack. Make sure that the strip mark on the diode is facing outward. Then insert a shrink tube into the wire and connected it to the slide switch. Then cover the diode with the shrink tube. Now we will connect a wire to the isolator. The isolator has four pins. Pins 1 and 2 are for the input. And the other two are for the output. Pin 1 is marked by a gray dot. Connect a short positive wire to pin 2. This is input positive. Then connect another two wires that will go to the Bluetooth board to pin 3 and pin 4. Insert a shrink tube into the ground wire from the DC jack and connect it to pin 1. Then connect a wire from the second pin to the slide switch. Once you've finished all the wiring, apply some heat to all the heat shrink tubes. However, to prevent any damage to the 3D printed enclosure, you may need to remove the slide switch before applying the heat. Insert the Bluetooth board into the enclosure and secure it with M2 screws. Apply a VHB tape to the isolator and attached it to the enclosure. Now it's time to start wiring the Bluetooth board. Begin by soldering the DC output from the isolator to the board input. Then connect the audio wire to the audio output pin. You can also solder the ground wire to the metal part on the 3.5mm audio socket. I also cover the soldered joints with some hot melt glue to provide extra strength and shield them from accidentally being shorted with other wire. After completing the wiring, this is what the enclosure should look like. Now, you can close the cover and secure it with M3 screws. Use the 20mm screw for the top left hole and use the 3 12mm screws for the remaining holes to secure the cover in place. Okay, it's time for a quick test. Insert the module into the speaker. The DC jack and audio jack will fit perfectly to the speaker DC input and auxiliary port. I have this 12 volt adapter that's been lying around and I'm going to use it now. Plug in the 12 volts cable. Turn on the speaker and select auxiliary input. Turn on the Bluetooth module. The notification sound means the Bluetooth is ready to connect. I've already paired my phone with this board, so it connects automatically. Let's see how it works. To make it more convenient to use, I added a smart Wi-Fi outlet in order to control it with the Google Home app. I will leave the speaker's main switch to the auxiliary input and turn the switch on the Bluetooth module to the on position. This way, whenever I turn on the speaker using the Google Home app, it automatically connects to the paired device. To pair the device for the first time, just turn on the Bluetooth on iPad and select XFWBT. After pairing you can also change the Bluetooth device's name and the device information. The 
last thing I like to add is upgrading the external FM antenna. The antenna that came with the speaker is this one. It's quite okay. But I think that a solid 75 ohm antenna with 7 sectors would be much more convenient. The best part is that it can easily fold up and be out of the way when not in use. To install the new antenna just screw it into the external antenna port and tighten it with a wrench. And don't forget to turn the FM antenna switch on the back to external. I'm also using a 90 degrees DC extension cord to save some space on the back. I think that's it. I'm really happy with the outcome of this project and the quality of the sound from the new module. Now I can use it more frequently. It's a great way to breathe new life into an older piece of equipment. I hope this video is helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to add them in the comment. I already included a list of the components, and a link to download the 3D print parts in the video description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving me a like and subscribe to receive more cool DIY ideas. Happy making! Thank you for watching.